I went to high school in Pennsylvania and I remember going to my guidance counselor's office and I said I wanted to be a composer. And they said, what are you talking about? It's not a job, that's a hobby. Five years later, I'm in California, and I remember my mom uh, coming out with my dad to, uh, to see me, and, and my dad would tell me stories about how she would have nightmares that I was actually going to be on Venice Beach with a little hat and a set of bongos, waiting for people to put enough change in my hat so I could buy, uh, buy dinner that night. And it was on the edge a couple times, I'm not going to lie, I never actually did it, but, uh, you know, but what I would say is it is a career, it's actually an amazing industry with a lot of options, even that you don't see, to make a living, to get your foot in the door. There are literally thousands and thousands and thousands of jobs in support of composing, uh, in support of film music that you can make a complete career and living out of everything from music editor to music supervisor to copyists, programmers, um, sound, you know, sample de developers. And they're amazing careers in and of themselves. They're also great ways to develop and 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 pay the bills. You know, while you're attempting to, to get your your actual composing career started. And then the other, of course, the other way is, is being an assistant. And um, I was Basil Polidor's assistant for four years on amazing things like Free Willy and Starship Troopers and you know amazing stuff. And then I ended up working for Michael Kamen a couple years after that. And. Uh, started out transcribing for Michael um, out of a sequencer and ended up orchestrating for him. And so there's all those kind of jobs that not only will pay enough money that you can actually have an apartment and buy food, um, but they will also put you in a position where you meet people, where you watch the person you're working with handle situations like they don't like your cue, or you might get fired, or there's not enough money, or you don't understand to direct a director and a producer don't agree on something. So I feel like the the thing I would suggest is you probably have to do a little education uh, of parents and, and, and advisors and guidance counselors and things like that to just let them know that this is a real thing. And, and luckily with the internet, it's, it's probably easier to sort of prove that out now than it used to be. But realize that it's a stepping stone situation. I mean, it was I was out of school for about seven or eight years before I could actually pay my bills writing my own music. Um, but I was working as assistant, I was being a gopher, I was filing cue sheets for a company, I was doing all kinds of side work um, and learning the whole way I was doing it. So it's very possible to just do that while you're sort of con continuing your education. It's almost like going to grad school and just making enough money to pay the bills. But then, you know, even once you get started, you know, there's gonna be lots of time where you're doing you know, you're doing a little web series that doesn't pay great, or you're doing, uh, you know, a slasher film with, with no budget, but it's going to lead to that director might love your music, and on the next movie, there'll be a big budget, and they'll call you back. Um, so it's really important to do all those kind of things, and the good news is, is that you can actually build a, you know, a career or a, you know, a job that actually pays money out of all of those things. So get good at Sibelius, get good at, uh, at Finale and all the programs that print music, um, learn how to, uh, how to make your own samples because you can make money doing that. There's all kinds of great things, but, uh, but that with being an assistant and, and, and being indispensable to whoever you're working for, that's sort of the key. Um, but it is absolutely possible to make a living doing this in a billion different ways. And then, you know, if you work hard enough, it's possible to make an amazing living doing and, and, you know, I'm blessed to, to be able to do this for a living. So it's, it's, really, it's really great. And, you know, I never bought into the whole idea of, uh, of you know, what's your fallback plan um, or, or, or what's, the safe, uh, what's the safe thing, get your degree and, you know, something else first. I really feel like you have to do what you love. Um, it's a competitive enough field that if you don't have that attitude, it might be tough to make it. So, so I sort of just went in with it thinking that I'm, I'm, I'm going to do it and that's, that's it. It just depends on how long it's going to take me.